what's going on? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know this is Kevin from the Court Progression Podcast. Hey, everybody. It is Tuesday. It's the 26th of April. And let's go and have some fun today with a band where I'm not going to lie. I've seen this band twice. Can't see them a third time. And, oh, man, this one is just an hour full of just some of the best stuff ever. Before we get started, I want to thank our sponsors first, Phoenix Fitness. Yes, you guys know. You know we're getting towards the summer months. So always good to go back and do the gym and be fit. Yeah, or be strong like Arnold. Okay, enough with me trying to impersonate Arnold Schwarzenegger because I can't do it. But you might want to go into your fitness goals or be like me where all of a sudden it's like you see a mosh pit. You're like, ooh, yay. But remember, I'm 27. I'm not 18 anymore. So I got to make sure my fitness level is up to par so that, you know, I can keep going and doing this stuff every single night that I want to. I mean, 14 shows in, you know, the span of like a month and a half. That's a lot. But we have did it anyway. So, bef- you know... When it comes to, you know, recovering, right, and preparing, right, you know, after hitting the gym to achieve those fitness goals, that's where Phoenix Fitness comes in to help you get those. So they have different things such as pre-workouts to help, you know, get your workout going, both sim and sim free. Is it sim free stuff because me and caffeine do not get along? There is also... Other things like creatine help you build muscle, protein help you build muscle with different blends, AM, PM, directly after your workout, collagen protein, plant-based protein, uh, different multivitamins, anything you might need to achieve your fitness goals, Phoenix Fitness has for you. So our listeners get 15% off using the code MSOTD at checkout. Thank you, Phoenix Fitness. Link in the description of the podcast along with the promo code. Now the second sponsor is Custom Debuts. I still have nothing back on that wall over there, so maybe I should put some on there. Maybe a post from Custom Debuts. So what do they do? They create these custom posters based off of anything you want in music. So what you do is you give them the band name. Say it's Rise Against. Give them an album, The Suffer and the Witness, or give them a song from that band, Prayer the Refugee. And they will make a custom poster for you based off of what you tell them. So if it's Suffer the Witness, they'll make a custom poster for me based off of, you know, the album artwork, maybe something around them, maybe one of the music videos, maybe off the track list, who knows what it might be. When it comes to the song, they might make something cool with the lyrics, they might do something cool around that, you never really know, but... You know, they'll, you tell them what you want. They come back to you with the proof within 48 hours. And if you don't like it, you tell them what you want to change. And bing, bang, boom, they will change it for you. And you can get it either on, you know, normal post paper, a canvas print, or uh, an aluminum sign. Yeah, you want some metal in your life? Heavy metal on a heavy metal poster? Well, Rise Against some more punk rock. But you want, like, let's do Slipknot. You want metal on a metal poster? Yeah, go with that. Slipknot. You could be the coolest person you know in your office, in the garage, at your house, in your basement, in your dorm room, literally anywhere, in the bar. Be the coolest person out there. So make sure you go do that. Our listeners get 10% off using the code CPP10 at Custom Abuse website. Link description of the podcast along with the promo code Think Custom Abuse. Now to our feature presentation. So the band today is Hollow Front. They've got a brand new album called The Price of Dreaming, which is coming out on May 27, 2022. So this is the perfect album to go into your Memorial Day weekend with. But with this podcast, I can talk to Tyler, the lead vocalist for the band. And what do we talk about? Well, the band just got off tour with Fit for a King, Sound Plant, and Avoid. So we talk about touring with those guys, touring when they came back for, to touring, you know, after the pandemic with Devil Wars Prada, We Came as Romans, going back out on the road with We Came as Romans, talk about some cool tour stories, talk about the making of The Price of Dreaming, how it was different than what is what they are used to, and we go into a couple of songs, specifically Thick as Blood and Dear Sons. When you listen to what we talk about with Dear Sons, it is insane. So if you are a son, a child, or a father, please, please, please mark that as a song, as a must listen so but enough with that guys let's just get into the conversation with Tyler from hollow front are you guys ready let's go yeah whoa 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 ladies and boys and girls listeners of the core progression podcast i had the pleasure of seeing this band and this guy perform live back in March when they were on tour with Fit for King, Sound Planet, and of course the guys in Avoid. They're gonna be going on tour once again with August Burns Red and We Came as Romans later in summer. And you should definitely go to that because you're gonna see me there as well. They have a brand new album called The Price of Dreaming coming out on May 27th, 2022. Perfect album to go into your Memorial Day weekend with. So let's talk all about it. So please welcome Tyler from the band Hollow Front to the podcast. So Tyler, welcome to Core Progression Podcast. Thank you for having me, Kevin. I appreciate the, the invite. Oh, I appreciate having you on, man. How's everything going in your world? Because I know you just guys, you guys just got off the road, like literally when we're recording this, like a couple days beforehand. So it seems like for you guys, yeah. you know, get off the road and all of a sudden now you're working on, you know, stuff to push the new album out there and make sure as many people know about it. So how's everything been going, man? Uh, it's been going very, very good. Uh, you know, we just, like you said, we just got home Sunday at like 4 a.m. Um, so I haven't been home very, very long. And then we had a new single come out. A, video, a new video come out last night, a new single come out today. 
And then, yeah, I have a podcast with you. And then I have like three more this week. So very, very busy, you know, but, it's, you know, you're, it feels good because that means we're amping up to the release of the album, which is something that we've been sitting on for over a year now. So it feels good to finally be releasing that for the world to hear. Yeah, and not only that, but, you know, just getting back to doing everything when it comes to being hollow front, getting back on the road as well. Because, of course, we all went through 2020 and 2021 where, you know, <laughs> things were not the best in terms of, you know, anything with music, live music, anything of that. And now that it's pretty much all back, full swing, ready to go, it's like you just got to just take it for what it is and just enjoy the process. Absolutely. Like, it, you can't take it for granted, you know, because I think... You know, I don't, I don't think people did before, but it was easier to take it for granted when you didn't know it was going to go away, you know, like now it's just like, I want to tour as much as possible, but I also want to make sure we don't burn ourselves out, you know? Um, but yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm very happy with what, what we've been able to accomplish since the pandemic, you know, you know, it's still here and we're not out of it yet, but we're starting to move, you know, more towards the, the clear than we were at the beginning. Oh, absolutely. There's still residual things happening where, you know, there are times where bands just, so, you know, someone catches COVID and then that band has to be on the shelf for about four or five days. It is unfortunate, but it is a thing that does happen and it is smart to take that precaution. However, we are close, inching closer and closer to that point where, you know, how everything was kind of running within the live music scene where it's kind of like, you know, just kind of the periphery of it is close to being back to what it was before the pandemic in terms of, you know, the health aspect of it where, I mean, shows are, are packed to the brim right now, especially the ones that I've seen. It's like, they've been packed to the brim. People are enjoying it going nuts. Heck, I was at one the night before we did this and it was insane. Just watching all of a sudden, okay, first band comes on, everyone's in it. You get a, you know, the, the pits just full of crowd killers. It's like, okay, we'll let them, you know, have their fun. Cause it's just yeah. all them. Second band goes on and everyone's doing a giant circle pit because it's Pennywise. So everyone's having a great time. Then rise against goes on and everyone's just pushing each other in a mosh pit, having just a blast. And it was just like, this is what we miss. And then every single show I've been to, cause I've been to probably like, I want to say 13 or 14 the past like month and a half. It's like, I'm saying that, that every single time, including one of yours as well. So I always want to Absolutely. throw that in there. Yeah. I was surprised by the Belvedere show. Cause I'd never, you know, not, I've never heard of Belvedere, Illinois before, you know, it's like, I know it's somewhere near Chicago or around that area. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like, you know, I've never been there. So I was, when we showed up, I was like, huh. I was like, I'm wondering what the turnout's going to be like. And then it was like, it was packed. It was fun. It was a good show. Yeah, because like for that Belvedere one, because it's for everyone, Belvedere, Illinois is right next to Rockford, Illinois. So okay. I know you guys also played at the Forge in Joliet, Illinois the following night because I knew a lot of people end up going to that show as well. When it comes to the Belvedere area, what I've been seeing is like, you know, when bands come through there, you get a lot of people from the Chicago area that didn't go to like, you know, if there's another one in the area for that time, they'll go to that one or you get people from Rockford or like me being in Milwaukee. It's like, oh, that's like an hour and 15 minutes. Let's go. Right. Uh, yeah, it's a good spot for you. Oh, absolutely. And you just got off tour with, you know, I fit for a King, Silent Planet, and of course, Avoid. So what was it like being back on tour? You know, I know you guys did a tour. I believe you did the uh, Double Wars Pride and We Came as Romans one at the end of like 2021, right? Yeah, it was October, a little bit November, like first week of November. Um, it was cool to tour um, with Fit for a King because our manager is Ryan Kirby. Um, we've, we've been working with him for three years. Um, so, and, and he even said this the last night, he's like, you guys earned this tour. It wasn't something I did for you as a favor because I'm your manager. He's like, I waited until I knew you guys were, you know, ready on your own before that we gave you this offer. And it was like, you know, I really appreciate that because it wasn't like a handout, it wasn't charity. Um, and then like silent play, I mean, see all these bands, like even Avoid, I've I've known about them almost as long as Hollow Front's been around. Um, I think I've learned about them like 2017, 2018, I think. Um, but like Silent Planet, Fit for a King, those are bands that you know we've that I've been listening to for a while. So it was very it was very cool experience and very humbling to be able to um, just go out with those like legends, I guess you know, because they're they're. They're, they're growing into legends in the scene of Silent Planet and Fit for a King. Oh, definitely. I have to agree on Fit for a King with that, especially just because 
I mean, they've been around for quite some time, but every t- I've seen them twice live so far, and every time I've gone there, I mean, the first time I went to go see them live, I had no expectation of what was going on. I'm like, I don't know this band. All of a sudden, it was just energetic as all hell. Everyone's in the pit going nuts. I'm like, oh, boy, this is fun. I think I found a band that I like now. And then going to see them, yep. you know, at the Belvedere show with you guys, just seeing the way that people were reacting to them. It's something where this band's going to end up going back out on tour once again, probably later in the year. And that reaction is just going to be consistent for them. Not that, but you know, you guys being on that tour and earning it, that says a lot about you guys, a band as well, where you have grown to a point where all of a sudden, yeah, you deserve to be on these tours. It's not because someone's doing you a favor. No, it's because you deserve to be there. The hard work has paid off at this point. Yep, absolutely. Um, You know, and that's, that's just a testament to the drive that we've had, you know, we, we've been killing it nonstop, you know, and just doing as much as we can to get to this point. And I, you know, part of me is like, I feel like it's, we were a lot luckier than, than some other bands, you know, we it, it only took us like two to three small tours before we got, we came as Romans, you know, and that the pandemic really helped us, you know, with, in terms of growth, because we released an album like pretty much at the beginning of the pandemic, Loose Threads, and it was it was just really helped us. And when when everything when shows came back, we were kind of at a place where it's like, all right, let's see what they can do. And I think we're um, holding our own. Oh, very much so holding your own. Now, during the pandemic, especially, you guys did release that record, you know, early on in the cycle. And from what I had seen from bands that released albums early on in the cycle right when the pandemic started because the ones that stick on my mind were uh in this moment did red did august burns red did and trivium did it's those albums had a lot of success behind them because you know people are locked in their houses people are clamoring for anything new because you can only watch tiger king so many times at that point you can only watch you know like whatever netflix reality show was on at that time whatever weird dating game they had you can only watch it for so long people are gonna be craving something new so all of a sudden you releasing that album during that time it does speak volumes to you being able to grow from that and then when you know live shows are coming back in 2021 you guys going back out on the road with the we came as romans too with Devil Wears Prada and Dayseeker. It just really stood the test where all of a sudden you guys are coming out and you have these new songs that you've had out for over a year, but no one's seen them live yet. So you get to see how people interact with them. Plus, yeah. you guys still have a whole nother album still on the back burner that's ready to be released at any given point, which now is, you know, yeah. May 27th. Which, you know, that it's a challenge because people expect you to play a lot of stuff from the album, you know, that came out in 2020, but we have we're still an opening band so we have shorter sets and you know we have a new album coming out so we have 12 new songs of two you know new material so it's, it's been a real challenge kind of coming up with set lists um especially for abr because the new album will be out so we'll be playing majority the price of dreaming and i think and i don't even know if we're playing anything off loose threads except for i guess wearing thin technically is a part of that cycle um, yeah, it's just, t- it's tough coming up with a set list when you're still playing 30 minute sets. And not only that, but just, you know, curating your set list also so that it caters to the crowd that's going to be there because with being on tour with, you know, we came as Romans, August Burns, Red coming up, you know, the type of fans are going to be coming there to be coming for you, but also coming for the type of music that we came as Romans and August Burns, Reds puts out there. So you also want to put together a set list that accurately just like, works within the flow of all of that as well along with everything that's coming off of the price of dreaming with after which after listening to it i mean i'm not gonna lie i'm excited for uh, august 20th when i get to see you perform live at that point because i've listened to the album and just hearing it there's gonna be a lot from there that's really gonna be able to drive the crowd and honestly it's gonna on that live show i feel like it's gonna lead perfectly going into we came as roman so i'm really excited to see what's gonna happen at that show yeah i'm also very excited to tour with we came as romans again they're just really cool guys um you know they've been around for a really long time and it it, it'll be cool to return to a tour like within a year you know we tour with them in october of 2021 now we're touring with them in july august of 2022 like it's it's cool it's like it's uh well we'll go into something with familiarity because i feel like with tours like it takes about a week before like everybody is finally comfortable and warmed up and you know, I'm sure that varies depending on the tour, but at least from my experience, um, 
you know, it takes a few days to a week for everyone to be like, you know, everyone know everybody's names and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, we came as Romans. We'll already have that, which is super exciting. Yeah, it's like, you see the walk up and be like, Hey guys, how's it going? And none of that, but it's like taking a look at some of the places you're playing too. There's going to be a familiarity in venues. I mean, how, when I get to see you, mm-hmm. it was the same venue. I saw you and we, you guys and with, we came as Romans on Halloween night in 2021. It's going to be the same venue, probably that same stage as well. I'm just like, this is going to be like a trippy, like weird time, but it's going to be fun as all hell because, well, you guys are playing at the oh, rave. So you I were, love the rave. So you were at our, you were at the Halloween show then, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was fun. Uh, it'll be weird being at the rave, not on Halloween now. Oh yeah, that's right. Especially with like the rave having the haunted backstory to it as well. Just adding to the whole entire yeah. aesthetic. Unfortunately, it's not going to be fully decorated for Halloween when you guys come back, but the aesthetic and the so fun cool, will still man. be there. That, 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 the whole like, like decorations, it just felt very Halloweeny, and it was, it was very, it was probably the coolest Halloween show I've ever played, even though I dressed up as Donald Trump. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of people there were like, Oh, I, they they either thought I was for Donald Trump or they just were angry that I was. I don't know. It was it was a bold choice, I will say. <laughs> hey, man, fortune favors the bold at some point. Because I still remember you had the Donald Trump costume. The guys in Dayseeker were basically the Avengers, except I think Rory was Deadpool. Devil Wars Prada came out in all, like, cowboy costumes. And then here comes we came as Romans in, like, formal business attire with these crazy wigs. And they did the whole entire, like, skit on stage. It took, like, ten minutes, but it was just utterly ridiculous. Like, now that... Is perfect for a Halloween show. Yep, that was great. That was fun times, man. Did you get to sign the pool at the rave? Um, I did not. I looked in and peeked at it, but I didn't go in. I didn't go into it. Well, now in August, make sure you do it, man, because I got to take a look at that pool back when I in like uh so during the pandemic, just for that for for the rave to try and pick up some money and try and gain revenue, they actually opened the whole entire venue to people to come through and do like a haunted Halloween tour where all the lights were off. You had flashlights, you just walked around and got to see stuff. End up look finding the pool, and I'm just like, oh, this is cool. Like they had smoke machines at the bottom of the pool to kind of make it look even more haunted. People were kind of getting like weird up by the creepy vibes. So I've got a flashlight. I'm looking at all the signatures on the wall. I'm like, okay, which show did I go to? Which one of these did I know? <laughs> yeah, I know that um, Devil Wears Prada took some pictures because their green room was like attached to it. <laughs> um, so they were taking like pictures in the pool. But usually, as like the opening band, you try not to bother the the uh, the bigger bands you know in their green room so you kind of I, I peeked in but I didn't like stay and chill um honestly man if, if if I had if I had any wish for playing at the rave it would be playing at the venue upstairs the ballroom like the ballroom is gorgeous man like holy crap like I feel like I know like it's probably like way it's like five six thousand cap or something but it's like man that'd be so cool to play because it's so it's so it's like weird to disconnect from the bottom venue to the top venue. It's just like a whole different world. Super sweet. Oh yeah, because it's like you have the absolute basement stage, and it just looks like a normal, like you know, smaller normal club bar stage. venue. Just- yeah, just something small. You go to the stage that you guys play, which is the middle stage. It looks like a full-on, like, really nice club venue. Then you go to the ballroom, which is where I was last night for Rise Against. I think we had something like forty six or 4,700 for that show. And it's just the space that you have, the beauty of the whole entire thing. And not going to lie, it's like sometimes the sound, sometimes it depends on the band. Sometimes zippy, sometimes it's not. That was the best sounding set from Rise Against I've ever heard, and I've seen them 14 times. So if you guys get a chance to play up at that stage, I mean, take it all in. Just enjoy it because... The way things are going, it's you're steadily climbing that ladder. You're steadily getting to that point. So, you know, you might be doing your own headlining tour in the next couple of years, and you could come to the rave and be headlining at the stage you're playing at right now, or potentially get on like an opening bill for a sub band that's just gigantic, and then be the ones playing at the ballroom and throwing in front of like 4,000 people, maybe 5,000 people as everyone funnels in. It's like, ooh, hello front, I want in. Yeah, that'd be sick, man. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're playing at the middle venue um with with august burns red but i'll hold out hope maybe maybe they'll sell enough tickets and they can go higher <laughs> well what will happen is is if they sell enough tickets what they'll do is because i saw them do this for the bear tooth show that they put on and so what they'll do is like if they sell enough tickets they'll put you up in the ballroom but they'll actually cut it in half 
just because like, okay, you know, if you're not going to sell, you know, like four, five, 6,000 tickets, they're not going to have the whole thing open. They'll cut it in half though. So you get to play, you know, basically half in the ballroom, but you're just not on the ballroom stage. But if all of a sudden something goes crazy, say August Burns Red, just all of a sudden, you know, or we came from just in the next couple of months, maybe with the We Came as Romans and the Born of Osiris uh, collaboration, maybe that just kicks off in a high gear and everyone gets psyched for it. And all of a sudden now they're selling 5,000 tickets and you guys get moved to the ballroom anyway. That would be a dream. Maybe we'll make it happen, you know. So, everybody, if you're in Milwaukee, buy tickets to the August Burns Red We Came as Romans Hollow Front Show on August 20th. And, yes, find me in the pit because I'll be there, guys. Nice. Now, one other thing when it comes to tour, because I do want to ask about this. What was it like touring with Avoid? Because those guys are hysterical, funny as all hell, and I just got to know about some of these stories. Because uh, Definitely the coolest dudes um, I've ever toured with, just in terms of, you could just tell they're hungry and they're like, they're just out to have fun. And they're just, a, they're the life of the party for sure. They're like, um, their guitar, Chris, their guitarist, Chris, he was like playing Fortnite on a switch while he was crowd surfing um, during Fit for a King set. And they'll, they'll have like some day, some nights we had like projector projection screens behind us and there's, their sound guy, Brandon, who also did sound for us, would be playing like Fortnite while the, while the show was going. So it'd be like Fortnite in the back of it. Um, and they're just like very fun and, you know, like down to earth dudes. And um, I've, I had a chance to listen to their new album, actually, and it's amazing. Um, I think they deserve all the success that's coming their way. And I know a couple of tours that they're going on besides the one that just got out, the North Lane tour. And I just feel like they're they're primed to take over. Oh God, yeah! Especially with the energy that they use to perform on stage. I did see some of the video of the whole entire Fortnite thing, and I actually did not know that if they were actually if someone was actually playing Fortnite, if it was just like a video that was going on in the background, and the guys on stage, yep, like Benny, was just like play. playing. But it was actually their stuff that I was playing. That's just hysterical. Like, who comes up with that stuff? But that's stuff that people remember. Plus, also seeing them live as well. It's like. They had that crowd energized and controlled, and they had one of the biggest walls of death I've seen for, like, just an opening band. So, all of a sudden, when you guys came on afterwards, as a crowd, we were all amped up, ready to go. It's like, let's go! Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be to be honest, they were kind of a hard band to follow. They were just very, they were a different kind of energy than we are. They're a different band than everybody on that tour. You know, I feel like, I feel like they were the odd band out as far as the style of music that they played. But it really worked for them because they they hold themselves and um, they hold themselves so well in that genre, and they just you can feel how authentic it is. It's not like they're just doing that genre to be different. They're different because they're different. Oh God, yeah, especially like from uh, 2021 when uh, Benny, their the lead singer for Avoid, when they did a uh, I think they did a national anthem for a truck series race out in Vegas. And Benny yeah. had to sing it well, like on a five minute notice because it was just supposed to be guitars, and all of a sudden there was a bunch of stuff that happened. Didn't he, and he'll even tell you it was it was not good, and people were roasting him. He was having fun with it. Then Jim Rome picks it up, just starts bashing the band. Then ends up listening to the rest of their music and actually likes. It. And then Benny calls into the show just for the fun of it, like doing that kind of stuff. Just comes like just really shows how great of a of guys they are. And even though I remember, I think it was Benny that said something about, you know, touring basically coordinating with you guys about stopping and hanging out in the parking lot of love's truck stops. That That's very true. We did do that a few, a few times. And then Bucky's, um, which is like a pretty famous touring place for us, at least like it's cool down South, basically a massive truck, like massive gas station. But yeah. we meet up hang um it was cold though so it was like hang for like an hour i was like all right i'm freezing <laughs> going back to my my band um but no it was, they were a lot of fun and uh, i hope that we get to tour with them again you you guys very well probably are gonna get to tour with them again just seeing you know how well everything went also hearing the things that benny had said about the band as well was nothing but positivity on top of that just seeing the growth that both you're having and they're having with the boy there's a lot going on there where next thing you know all of a sudden give it maybe two three years all of a sudden i'm gonna see a show come at the rave or all of a sudden it might be a co-headlining show between you and avoid it's like you gotta be kidding me this is awesome find me in the pit yo Woo! yeah Absolutely. I'd be, I'd be totally down. 
Well, everyone, well, I mean, we know, like you said, you've listened to Avoid's new album. Whenever it comes out, you guys got the new album coming out on May 27th, The Price of Dreaming. So it's all coming in. This, like the next step is happening. It's happening right here. Yeah. Absolutely. And it makes me excited. And now jumping into The Price of Dreaming, because again, that's the new album coming out on the 27th. I went through it as deeply as possible I could, went through every single song. And I'm not going to lie. One thing I noticed about this was you guys went incredibly deep in terms of this, the messages you were putting out, at least the messages that I was perceiving coming on this on this album. So what was it like writing this album, especially with some of the things that you, you wrote on this coming from a personal side? Oh, you know, like this album was a lot different than the other albums that we did. It was, it was a very scary time, you know, with the pandemic. We were a year in and at that point it didn't look like we had tours booked, but we were ready for them to get canceled, you know? Um, and yeah, there was a lot of stuff that happened within those, within that year, within those, those few months, you know, after the pandemic started that just kind of drove the, you know, the wedge into what we really wanted to talk about, I guess it kind of was able, we were able to dig deeper than I think we did on other stuff. But it was also more of a collaborative effort because I feel like with Loose Threads, there was, we introduced Dakota, our guitar player, singing. Um, and like he was on some songs. He was on, but now it's like on this album, we collaborated almost on every song. Like there's a few songs with just streaming. Um, but for the most part, he was involved in all of the songs. So it was a little bit different of a writing process than what I was used to. Um, I've never, I've always been like the only vocalist in the band um, and in and, and every band that I've ever been in really, you know? So it was, you know, we took a lot of time to work together, you know, we also worked separately and then came together and worked, but, and like even Brandon, our bass player, he had some lyrics and stuff and Lee, our guitar, other guitar player had lyrics and even, I think Devin even threw in a few lyrics uh, here and there. Um, but yeah, it was a very collaborative effort and it was, it was different because we left home to record it. Like we, all, everything else was done in Grand Rapids. Um, you know, a hop, skip and a jump away from my bed, you know, not, uh, 1500 miles away, sleeping on air mattresses in the, on the, you know, in, in a studio, you know? So it was, it was a lot different of a process than we'd ever done before because it was, we, we were ripped out of our comfort zone and dropped into this new environment. And it was like, okay, write your, write the next album. That's going to be better than the last album. You know, it's just, you know, the pressure was on and I think it helped um, kind of guide us and point us in the direction of what we wanted to see um, come to fruition from the album. Man, that's a like that's a lot, especially just the difference in you know writing style, especially you uh, with more of Dakota's vocals in there, which is definitely prevalent on the album. Because I think there was like maybe out of the twelve songs, maybe two that were specifically you know screaming from you. So mm -hmm. like, there's a lot more of that mixture there. Plus, you know, you guys going to travel and have to record this in a different you know, all the way away from you. It puts you guys in a different setting, a different realm to really work on this stuff. So it opens up, you know, a difference of possibilities. But specifically when it comes to the vocals, I have to take a look at my, you know, note sheet on my other screen here. And like when it came to the vocals, I thought the mixture of clean vocals from Dakota and these songs often showed a lot of emotion around understanding whatever the topic was, feeling the emotional weight of kind of potentially running from our problems to the pain of losing someone we love to realizing that going for our dreams comes with issues that we must be willing to overcome. However, mixing with your uncleans, they provided us with a mix of like anger and passion to motivate us not only to do better, but to also break the mold and break through the issues that we're having in life and to show the trouble we are dealing with and the issues many people don't get a chance to see. So with that mixture and vocals and just the constant mixture of them, you were seeing so many different sides and so many different things that are being presented in these songs where so many different emotions were coming out, but everything flowed together so nicely between the two of you where these songs just felt right. Like they just felt natural, which is a huge thing to have. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I'm probably biased. <laughs> um, the most biased that I think that it's our best material to date. It just feels like, everyone's firing on all cylinders. It's not just a me thing or a Lee thing or, you know, it's not, it's not separated, you know, it's very integrated. And um, I think that um, 
being swept up and put into a different location out of our comfort zone really was we were able to you know we all we had was each other so it was like we didn't have the comforts of well i'm gonna go home and take myself out of the situation you know we were stuck in the situation and we had to problem solve because it's not easy to write 12 songs in 30 days you know lyrically or in you know look I would say all the instrumentals were done before we went into the studio. So that wasn't like we were writing, they were just recording, but a lot of the lyrics and a lot of the vocals were written on the spot. Um, besides treading water, I think was the only one that we had done before, like fully realized in a demo. So pretty much that song was, we copy and pasted and we re-recorded over there, but everything else was done. So 11 songs were done solely in that spot in Pennsylvania, which is where we recorded. And it was a challenge, man, because you're like, what, what, what do I write about? You know, what, what, and what, what can I say that is relatable to other people without being like, you know, shoving it down their throat or, you know, like trying to push our personal problems onto other people. Cause I feel like I write everything from a personal standpoint, but I also want to make it like globally relatable so that something like you could listen to it and you could pick out something different from it than even I had intended, you know? Um, yeah. And I, I just think me and Dakota worked really well together lyrically. And it was, a uh, it was the coolest um, experience I've had writing vocals. So now I, I got to ask, especially if you only had, you know, one song fully written out before going to the studio and then writing lyrics for 11 songs in 30 days. Why did you make that decision to write these all just in studio or the 11 songs you say in studio? You know, because I treading water was completely done. And I think that we were pretty sure that wasn't going to change. But you never know when you go in the studio, like shit, shit changes. So we, I didn't want to like get too comfortable with a song and be like because you know and i'm i'm not perfect you know i have i have my my problems too so i you know when i when I, i'll get i'll write a song and i'll be like i want the song to stay exactly like that because that's how i hear it in my head but that's not always the case you know or you know you don't always get what you want you know so i think i i wanted it to be more collaborative so i think it was me and dakota will write you know with 30 days you know we wrote a, probably a song. Sometimes we wrote them one night. Sometimes like the song thick as blood. It, we, we started and then we couldn't get anywhere with it. So we left it for the end. And then that was like our final song we wrote um, and recorded, but it was just like, we just kind of Tetris and kind of picked the songs that fit like, okay, I feel like this song I could get into today and write. Um, and then, you know, you would wait and, you know, you would do another song another day when you felt a little bit better, but you had other things that kind of broke up the time, you know, drums. Um, but I say we were doing like vocals probably like 80% of the time. So not the full 30 days, but we were writing and recording like the, almost immediately. So I would have these very fresh ideas and then go the next day and start recording them. Um, and then after, after like the session was over which was like six o'clock is usually when um carson and grant the producers or um the engineers they would go home because that's like their normal work day and then we'd eat dinner hang out for a little bit and then i would spend a lot of my night writing the song for the next day and so would dakota and we would just kind of rinse and repeat that cycle and then take weekends off you know because you need a break you can't you can't like over work yourself because then you'll start you know writing things that aren't authentic i guess and, you know just just writing words to write words is not always the right answer so um definitely took our time but also we were very we we're on a crunch but we still took our time doing the lyrics and the the syncopations of the the vocal patterns and yeah Oh, totally understandable. When it comes to just that feeling of like, you know, you guys have just this little time to do it in, but you're taking the most amount of time to do it to make sure that you have the time to do this stuff and work everything out. That's a smart move to go about it because when you get to that potential burnout stage, which I'm not gonna lie, I've felt that past couple of days as well, where 
it's just your mind isn't fully engaged. It's just like there feels like there's something missing. So if you're trying to write something that's, you know, really is going to have to take a lot of emotion in there and really want to write the best way possible. If you would have something like kind of like some like brain fog or like that kind of burnout feel where you're just kind of exhausted and potentially just not running at full capacity mentally. I mean, you're not going to end up writing the best stuff, or you might write something that does, you know, hit where you want it to hit. But the way it flows in the song just doesn't necessarily work based off of just, you know, your mind just isn't fully engaged in that. So taking the time makes a lot of sense. On top of that, one thing I do want to mention that you said was when you talked about, you know, you're writing this stuff from a personal standpoint, but you also want to make it not like not as like streamlined as much so that people can also relate to it as well. That's a huge thing with music just because not everyone goes through the same thing. But if you're able to put your own personal self in there while also, you know, writing a metaphorical sense where we're not going to be so ingrained in just the story where it's like, if we haven't experienced that story the same way you did, we're not going to understand where you're coming from. But if you base it solely off of like, you know, like, okay, you know, this is the story, but, and this is the inspiration behind the song, but this is the core emotion at it. And this is what we're writing towards. Then we connect with that emotion. We put our own selves into the songs and then we connect with them on that end. Cause now it feels more personal to us. But you still have your what you wrote for the song. We have our interpretation of the song, but it's the emotions that line up. Yeah, absolutely. That's the goal, man. It's not, you know, I'm not just trying to, I, I write lyrics from the standpoint of this kind of like my therapy, you know? And if other people can use it to, you know, sort out their problems and like that, I'm all for that. Have you had people come up to you and talk to you about like how, like how your music has connected with them in that sort of way? Oh yeah, absolutely. Almost every show I think, you know, and it, you know, it doesn't, it's, it's hard because it, it never gets old. Like, you know, but I also feel for the people because it's like, I know that the darkness that I've laid out in the songs and stuff, cause you know, we're not, a, we're not always super happy. There's, there's a few songs that borderline that, you know, that positive growth aspect, but a lot of our songs are, dark and deep and places that I don't like going to. So when people will, you know, come up to me and kind of explain how the songs have affected them and help them like it, it, I, I almost feel like bad because it's like, I don't want people to feel like that because it sucks. Um, you know, depression and anxiety and like self-esteem issues and insecurity and all that stuff is, you know the it's the plague of humanity um and i think all of us struggle with something or other whether we like to admit it or not and i feel like it's it's very brave of people who have never met me before to come up and be like your song saved my life and this is why um but i still get that feeling it's like you know i want people to give themselves credit you know i don't want them to try to give me all the credit because yes, music can be life saving and it can be a, a saving grace, but you really you put that own that that work in your you worked yourself through the issue with the help, you know. It was more like I was a crutch, you know. You were just kind of using me to stumble along, but you were using your your whole body to to get it to get where you need to go. And I, I want I want more people to I try to. I try to explain that to people. I, I want them to understand that they did it themselves as well and recognize their strengths, you know, because it, 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 it's not easy going through life because life can be, you know, hard. It's a roller coaster of emotions. You know, you're high, you're low, you're high, you're low. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just happy that anybody takes us seriously enough to connect with us on that level. And um, I'm very grateful. I guess I'll say. Well, that's probably one of the best ways to put it. I've never really heard an artist talk about it the way that you just talked about. It. So I'm, I was a little bit just like, you know, I don't want to say anything because I got to just listen to see what you're saying because it was just it, like profound in a way. Because even though you're saying like when people come to you and you feel bad, you're just having empathy for the situation, you have empathy for those people because you understand what it's like to be in that position and you don't want people to necessarily be in that position. But with your music, it's, it gives that time in life or that most or that time in life or whatever, a uh, position in life, whatever it might be, 
it gives that intangible explanation, something tangible to explain it too. Cause I always bring up the song above my head by Polaris. When I look at what I went through when I was going through depression and just didn't know what I want to do with life and kind of was losing myself in it. That song perfectly explains it. And it's just, it shows how far I've come from that point. And it's just like, Oh wow, this is nuts. So I connected on that front from what you're seeing as well is people are connecting with it because yeah, your music has opened up something in them it has connected them to potentially a time in life where it wasn't the best however it has given them power to continue to go forward and continue to break through that so that they look at that as a spot as a point in life where it was not the best situation but i learned a lot from it and went forward with it so that gives you the positivity coming from there but also i love what you said kind of about the crutch thing where it's you know the music is oh help like a helping tool for you to go forward and, you know, find that positivity in life, find what you're passionate about, get an understanding for what's going on in your life and potentially move forward from it. It's a crutch, but you know, you're also the one doing all the work too. It's kind of more the music is the inspiration point to get to that. It's like the, uh, it's like yeah. the flip of the switch. And at some point you don't need the crutch anymore. You're, you're kind of, you're doing it on your own, you know? So, and every once in a while you might, you might be a little sore. You might need your crutch or your, you know, or boot or whatever, that'll help you move along. But, you know, and, and sometimes people use the word crutch as like a negative connotation. I'm not trying to say that at all. I think it's more of, just like you said, it's a, it's a helping tool music. I, I have that with bands, you know, like there's, when I was a kid, Lincoln park and like, like that to me, like that band, like, you know, I don't, I don't want to say they saved my life, but I was very like sad and suicidal at that age, you know, and I, I felt misunderstood and listening to like a band like Linkin Park or Slipknot or any of those kind of, because I'm a little bit older, I'm 31. So listening to those bands, it was like, okay, like I don't feel like such an outcast. I don't feel like, like I'm the only person going through this, you know? Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense as well. Cause there's a lot of people, especially like the music that, you know, bringing up Linkin Park, you're bringing up Slipknot. And I can throw some other bands in there too. Throw Disturbed in there. I'll throw Rise Against in there as well. Some newer yeah. bands as well. Throw like Ice Nine Kills, Bad Omens, Polaris, Fit for a King. Throw some bands yep. like in there as well where we all like, especially for a lot of people like, you know, we don't, we love those bands and we're not, it's like, you know, when we need the help, that's kind of where the crutch comes in. The crutch is there to help us. So when we're mm -hmm. in like that horrible position or we just, you know, need some help. Music is there to help us continue on and continue to inspire us. And even when, you know, we're doing well, we don't necessarily need that crutch anymore, but we still go back to that music because that music is a reminder of the positivity that we can bring to our lives and the positivity going forward to see how far we've actually come and how much better off we are. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll shamelessly plug my, uh, my friends in a band called Casket, um, from the UK. Um, I actually just got to meet them in person in San Antonio for the first time. They're on tour with Dayseeker right now. And um, like their song Falling Apart, which I heard right after like kind of like a kind of after a breakup, kind of during a breakup. And like I listened to that song probably a hundred times in that week, just at work over and over and over. And it's like the song isn't like happy. It's It's, it's a song that's like you're talking about falling apart and basically being held together by, you know, glue, you know, but it's, you're, you're broken, you know, but you're, you're trying to fix yourself. And I think that like that, that's how I feel about like, that's how music helps me as well. Like it's, it's like, I, I'm just as much of a fan of music as I am a musician. And I, I feel the same things that those people feel like it's like, okay, when I'm feeling sad, like this song is I go, that was my go-to for like months you know that same song and it led me to listen to their other music and kind of be obsessed with their other music but um that one song was just over and over and over and if i, I had headphones in but i'm sure i would have annoyed somebody if i didn't if it's just like a boom box of the same song over and over and over but for me it was comforting you know and you know I'm, it, it, emotional because it was basically speaking it was saying everything that I wanted to say, but it wasn't coming from my lips or my mind, you know? Oh, absolutely. And bringing up caskets, like when you said that, my mind was just like, <gasps> cause I had him on the podcast twice in 2021. Once they had to make the main ch name change. And when they came out with the lost souls album, like I got to talk to these guys and falling apart was actually the first song I heard from them as well. I'm just like, 
Whoa. So when you started talking about it, I'm like, I can exactly see where you're coming from that can understand the emotions coming from it. And even like myself, I get to meet them at the end of April as well. And I already told them, I'm like, you guys will probably see me with like a case of beer. Like, Hey guys, this is for you. How's it going? Yeah. Uh, they're really cool dudes. Um, very British. Um, <laughs> But very fun to hang out with. We spent way too long waiting at, at a Denny's. To, we spent like almost two hours in a Denny's in San Antonio at like one in the morning trying to get food. And I'm like, I'm like, please don't let this sully your your idea of what Denny's is because this is not this is not like the normal. Usually, you can walk into a Denny's and you'll get your food in like ten minutes. Um, but it was it was cool just to hang out with them and kind of you know talk with them about their because all, all musicians experiences are different you know i mean there's similarities but for the most part we're all different people doing different things on different paths but just like kind of like all on the same same path but on different paths. i don't know how to, how to explain that but um it's, it's kind of like you know the like the end goal of it kind of has the same spot but the path every band takes i mean some bands go all over the place some bands just go right. straight down the line some bands go over bridges under in under overpasses all that kind of stuff some bands you know they go some forward, bands they go, get shot out of a cannon and they get landed right into the spot that they really want like spirit box yeah it's like they're just like all right boom and then they're like okay we're at the end we're at the finish line now <laughs> Yeah, or you get some bands like Ice Eye Kills, an example. Like, you know, it's slow, slow, slow. So all of a sudden the Silver Stream comes out. It's like they hit one of those, like, uh, zippers in Mario Kart, just like, <laughs> and yeah, there they go. Absolutely. That band is, I would love to tour them. Um, crazy, crazy stage, like, show um, for, like, a band their size. And it's, it's cool that they tour with, like, Metallica like are playing shows with metallica i think i don't know if it's an actual tour but i think they're playing shows with metallica they played like i think they played one in february in vegas and they've got two coming up in august with them as well yeah see i that's for me that's like they made it like if i was playing with metallica in an arena i'd be like i made it i you know i'm not i'm not like the biggest metallica fan in the world but i know some songs and i know that i would have a great time to be in like i'm on tour i'm playing shows with metallica yeah, I mean, even for myself, I'm not the biggest Metallica fan either. I do know a couple of songs, but if I got a chance, you know, to go on the road with Metallica, I'd feel like, you know, even like if I was just doing press or a podcast, I'd be like, I made it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Biggest metal, heavy metal band in the world. So, it's, you know, I can't, they've been, they've held that spot for the last 30 years. Yeah. And, and now they're, and now they're going on tour and having a couple of shows with a band that, you know, the, when they got super popular is metalcore based off of horror movies. And it's awesome, yeah, which, which is cool. It's a, you know, it's a gimmick, but it's a, it's a smart business. They've, they've made a, a, a empire out of, you know, out of his basically Spencer's hobby, which is horror movies. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely insane because even the first time I got to see Fit for a King, it was on an, a tour in 2019 and they were right before Ice Nine Kills and I saw Fit for King. I'm like, okay, I got to, like, I'm a fan of this band. Then I saw Ice Nine Kills with no expectation. I went from, I have no idea who this band is to, this might be my second favorite band of all time after one show. It was just, just the insanity yeah. behind it was awesome. Yeah, super cool band. I uh, would love to tour them. There's a lot of bands I'd love to tour with. Um, hopefully I get to tour them all. Well, like which bands? I want to hear some of these. Oh, Kill Switch would be like top list. Like I would love to be able to get that opportunity. Um, shit. Slipknot would be sick. Like Wage Wars on tour with Slipknot right now. I would love to be in their position. Um, dang, there's, there's a lot. Like, like for smaller bands like Polaris, I mean, they're not really small, but like smaller than like, you know, uh, Slipknot. Yeah. Um, Polaris would be super sick. Uh, we played a show with them in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts with like Alpha Wolf and it was like oh, a, yeah. the, two, the tours combined and they're awesome. And Alpha Wolf was awesome. And like, I would love to tour them just because they were just super fun to talk to. Um, North Lane, I'd love to tour with North Lane. I'd love to tour with... Uh, Shit, I prevail. I like to tour with. Um, there's a lot. 
I can't think of them all off the top of my head, but pretty much if it's a band and they're there, I would tour with them. <laughs> I'm not going to turn down anybody. I don't think, you know, it's like, ah, I'm not, I'm not at that point where it's like, nah, I don't want to tour with them. I'm like, yes, I want to tour with them. Just put me on the road. Oh, absolutely. And like the names you're bringing up as well. Kill switch. It's just seeing kill switch live. I mean, the, the, the amount of people that show up at those shows are ridiculous. I got to see them with yeah. August Burns Red and like the torch. And it was just fun as all hell. Polaris yeah. and Alpha Wolf. I forgot that you guys, your tour and their tour combined in Worcester, Massachusetts for that one show. Cause I still remember seeing Benny post. I'm like, I thought about this. Like why the hell is this happening in Massachusetts where I can't go and see like, you know, these eight insane was, bands performing one crazy. day. It was a very crazy day. Um, definitely something I won't ever forget because they put us after Alpha Wolf and, be- and before Polaris. And I'm like, Alpha Wolf is just killing it. And I'm standing side stage and I'm just like, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, I'm like, I just, how do you top these? How do you, how do you follow these guys up? You know, it's not about topping them, but it's just about how do you follow them up and continue to, and then you're playing right before Polaris. And it's like, whoo, like just, and I even said to my stage, I was like, why'd they do this to us? Why'd they put us between the two Australian bands? <laughs> um, but it, you know, it was super cool. It was a very um, um, awesome experience just being able to play with, like, because all the, like, Light Maws is awesome. InBet Animate's awesome. Um, I would tour with any of those bands. Um, I hope that I get to tour with all of them. I honestly hope so, because even with that show that you played, especially, you know, they put you after Alpha Wolf, because I got to see that uh, Polaris, like, Muff's name's Alpha Wolf, Invent Anime Tour in Chicago on the 8th, and it's just like, I remember uh, watching Alpha Wolf, it was like, the like the energy they had, it kind of reminded me of a Void, but much more of this streamlined, straightforward, just like, laser beam kind of energy, yeah. but kind of, even though, you know, you're after them, but before Polaris, you guys had the experience of, you know, op- being right after Avoid's energy for like a month at that point. So, yeah. you know, even if you were nervous, like you do have at that point some sort of precedent to work off of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just went up and did our thing. And, you know, at the end of the day, like I get nervous before every show. So it wasn't like it was a it was just a little extra nerve uh, from that one just because those two bands haven't been over here in a few years. And, it's you know. It, those are the bands that we're kind of, I guess, escalating with um, in the scene. Um, so it, it was it was both nerve wracking, but also like cool. It was very cool to be, you know, to be a part of that. Because I mean, I would have expected us to play right after a void, because like Invent Animate has been around forever, and but the fact that we were allowed the choice, the allowed not the choice, but allowed the the chance to play further on into the the, the lineup was very cool and uh it was sold out and it was massive and a show i will never forget oh absolutely plus i mean i've, I've heard nothing but good things about the uh palladium in worcester so like when i saw that i'm just thinking of course god damn it i wish this was you know closer to me so i could be a part of this but of course you know when it comes to just like an area of the country and like a venue to really pull that off in that is one of the venues i would have picked as like yep that can happen perfect yeah it's, oh. a, it's a perfect it's a perfect venue for that oh absolutely maybe, maybe next time you know maybe next time we can bring that to the rave and just have it in the ballroom maybe maybe i'm, I'm just that saying, would be just sick saying. i would i would be down for that um hopefully they have something cool like that happen again i, I, I didn't was, even know oh sorry i didn't mean to cut oh, you off but no, i didn't even ahead. know that i didn't even know about the show until they announced it like that wasn't like something our booking agent was like hey guess what you're doing this awesome show. I, I got to basically be a fan and like have it, you know, I, I, I was spoiled for me, you know, or not spoiled for me, but it was revealed to me just like everybody else. So I was like, Hey, my band's on that. That's sick. I was like, I didn't know that was happening, but I'm super for it. Oh God. I and mean, that's kind of cool. That you get to experience that from a fan's perspective from the release of it, just because especially being on the other side of, you know, a release of a, an announcement like that, where you're on the side of the performer, not the side of the attendee 
where mm. you get to actually feel like it's the other side once again and, you know, bring back some of those memories of going to shows that you were really excited for when you were younger. And just it's like, OK, you know, I'll, I'll use uh, I'll use Lincoln Park as an example. It's like all of a sudden you find out that Lincoln Park's coming to play like, you know, 30 minutes or an hour away from your like in Grand Rapids. It's just like, what? Yeah, I unfortunately never got to see Lincoln Park. That's one regret I have. I wish that I could go back to when I was like 13 and go see Lincoln Park. Um, but I never got that chance, which sucks. I did get to see Lincoln Park or uh, Slipknot when I was like 13. So that was like prime uh, subliminal versus era. Oh, yeah. Um, and that was super awesome. Um, and then I saw them again when I was like 26 and they were just as they were probably better they were better live but they were just super sick yeah i wish i could go back and see lincoln park um r.i.p chester yeah i can i can sympathize with you on that one. i never got a chance to see lincoln park live because i really didn't get into like going to concerts and going to live shows like crazy up until maybe later in 2018 beginning of 2019 when i started this whole entire thing i still would go to shows a good amount of times but it was like you know, some shows here and there, if it was, you know, an interesting one, maybe a festival day here in Milwaukee at Summerfest, or if like Rise Against or Hollywood Undead was playing, I'm like, I'm there. Right. For sure. Going, jumping back now into the price of dreaming just before, you know, just to kind of just, I, there's one question I want to ask about the album because there's 12 songs on it. If you have to give one song to people, just one song, it's like, okay, if you only have a chance to listen to one song, listen to this one, which one is it? Damn, what kind of question is that? It's like asking me to pick one of my 12 children and then exactly. murder all the other ones. <laughs> Not murder um, all the other ones, just like, you know, pump up a one a little bit more than the others. Dang. Let me think here for a second. I want to pick one that's not released because it would just be too easy to pick one that's released. Um, yeah, okay. The non-singles. How about that? The non-singles. I would say our song "Sick as Blood." It's a, it's a really cool song. It's it's very. I feel like all the songs on the record are slightly different from the next one. They're they're not all like carbon copies of the other songs. I think "Sick as Blood" is super emotional. I do a lot more clean singing in that one. Um, and there's just there's just something different about that song that I like. Um, the feel of that song. It's more of like it reminds me of like Lincoln Park kind of like that kind of a uh, that style without rap there's no rapping or anything like that um but um i say that song it's very and that's a song that is not even like personal i mean it's personal to me because i made it personal but the story behind it is more about our basis brandon um and i won't get too much into that story um because it's pretty personal for him um i'd rather let him kind of tell that when he's ready but um just a song about losing somebody that isn't blood related to you, but um, feels like family, I, I would say is the easiest way to, but not, not just losing them as like losing them, but like they died, you know? And so, and I, I have that same, I can relate to it because I had a grandpa that wasn't really my grandpa, but he was basically my grand, you know, he was, was my grandpa and he died of cancer. And that's kind of where I went. When I wrote my lyrics, I kind of went, in that direction just to keep it authentic for myself. Um, but yeah, like it's just a song about losing somebody you love that, you know, cause they, you know, blood, you know, blood thicker than water they say, but you know, you can't always choose, you, you can't choose your family, but you can choose your actual family. I guess if that makes any sense, um, you can't choose who you're related to, but you can choose family. Oh, absolutely. Because even like when I was going through it, I even put this thing, you know, it's like there's the the family we pick is can be just as strong or the stronger than the family that we have. Because I picked up on that a lot with this song when it came to that mindset or that, that kind of story, because where I went with it was I related to when I was younger, like my best friend. I've known this kid since he basically came out of the womb because we live right next door to each other when we were growing up. Always hung out, always did everything. All of a sudden it was like middle school hit and we just kind of stopped talking to each other, didn't associate with each other. It was like I lost my best friend and I lost someone that I basically considered family. And it sucked. 
All of a sudden, there was one day I ran to him on the street. He asked me to go for a walk with him. I just said, yeah, sure. And then all of a sudden, it kick started back up again. It's like, yeah. So this song took for me. It's like, I remind, it reminded me of that moment, but also how important it is where, yes, my family is important to me, but there's those people in life that aren't, you know, your blood related relatives but they mm-hmm. are family to you, you know, stronger than some of the people that you actually have, you know, as blood relatives. Absolutely. That's, that's what that song's about. Thick as blood. No, oh, absolutely. And even kind of like just the way that it was formed, especially, you know, from an instrumental standpoint, because I was kind of related with like some post hardcore vibes and more of this like modern architects kind of feel kind of clash together yeah. in the hollow front way. I'm just like this, just the emotion off of the instrumentals just makes sense for this kind of a topic just to go forward and basically kind of, put it right at you but not put it like directly in your face it's like it presents it to you but it's like you know here you go enjoy right absolutely yeah uh uh yeah i mean there's other songs i could i could go through every single song and tell you why i think you should listen to that song but i'll pick that one okay because you pick that one and before we go i'll do i'll do one myself just to kind of like pick one for you and it might be the one that stuck out the most to me, which was Dear Sons. Oh, awesome, man. That, that's a good one for me to talk about. <laughs> yeah, so, so what was this one about? Because when I listened to this one, like, I connected with it on some type of strong way. But I want to hear what you wrote about this one before, you know, going a little bit further into that as well. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's about my two kids. Um, I have two sons, uh, Preston and Logan. They're 11 and 7. And... Um, you know, I I was basically writing a love letter to them, you know, because I've never done that kind of a song before. It's, you know, I've I've written I, I've written put them in one song before, um, but it wasn't like a song centralized around them. So that's that's what Dear Sons is. It's just me, me basically, you know, telling them not to, you know, that the world is the world's scary, man. It's not like it's not everything it's cracked up to be. But you need to like, and even though I'm on tour and stuff like that, like I'm still gonna be there for them. And I just I don't want them to, I don't want them to go through the same hardships that I've gone through. I want them to grow as people and follow their dreams. And even though I follow my dreams, but I've I've done it in a dark way, I guess. Like you know, I've let darkness kind of, you know. Luckily, in my song like writing songs is has been helpful, but I, I just want them to be happy. I want them to not feel depression and not feel, and just, I want them to know that they're still my, even though that I'm gone for touring and stuff, they're still the loves of my life. They're the number one priority to me. And that if at any point hollow front got in between that, like I would choose my kids in a heartbeat. Um, but I just hope that they see this, that me following my dreams is like a, that I'm setting an example and that, I, that they're, that they're, that they can pick up on that. And that, um, yeah, it's just a love letter to my kids. I did not know that it was a love letter to your kids, but even like when I listened to it myself, I got to take it from the other perspective because I mean, I'm 27. I don't have kids myself, but I mean, I looked at it from a point of like, you know, you're writing it to your kids. I looked at it as like, you know, potentially like my dad say, you know, writing this, to me so being on the receiving end of it and there are a couple things that you said in that song it's like you know that you're that you're not gonna be perfect but you're always gonna try like as hard as possible where even for my dad was my dad perfect no 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 father ever is perfect no one's like the perfect dad where it's like they're gonna be at everything it's impossible but they're gonna try yeah. their hardest to do some to to you know provide for y- you as a kid and provide for their families and give the families and kids the life they always wanted or the life that they never had. And, you know, you're, you have two kids and, you know, you go out on tour, so you don't get to see them for, you know, sometimes weeks, months at a time. For me, when I was growing up, it was my dad, I would go to school and I wouldn't see my dad over the, during the week because my dad worked second shift. So by the time I got home from, I wake up to go to school, he was sleeping. Time I got home, he was already at work. Went to bed, he still was at work. And then he picked up a second job even like in 2007 to kind of help out even further. So I would see him maybe one day a week, but it came to a point where, you know, I never like was like, oh, I'm not seeing my dad as much. I knew why he was doing it. So there was this form of just like utter respect and just like understanding where you could, even though he wasn't around, it was he was doing things to provide for me and my brother and my mom. 
So being able to hear from that perspective, this song just took this whole other like life for myself in, and then like hearing it from your perspective as well, just seeing, you know, you're on the right end of it. I'd be on the receiving end of it. And I'm not going to lie. It absolutely hits. Thank you, dude. That, that means a lot because I, I really wanted that song to, you know, I, I hope that it for fathers everywhere and for, you know, even not, I never really thought about it from your perspective, like the way that you just said, you know, explain your perspective. I never really thought about it like that, but I, that's really cool that like now, like there will be sons that listen to this and be like, I love my dad, you know, like I'm, my dad might not have been perfect. He, he, what he missed baseball games and he, you know, he was working and he was doing what he needed to do, but he still supported me and was a good dad. I think that, That'll be really cool to see, like, when that song's released and people, like, are able to express, like, their stories and stuff. That'll be really interesting to see from oh, both sides. Oh, absolutely. Especially even with your vocal as well being more of just the screaming, unclean kind of style, just really the focus in there. It just shows the raw power that's behind us and the raw emotion that's behind this. So it does connect. But the reason I want to bring up kind of like how I connect with my dad, because when you start talking about, you know, this is to your sons and you're the one that's, you know, you're not there all the time based off of you're going on tour. So you can't be there all the time from a perspective of someone who had a, who has a father that, you know, when I was growing up had somewhat of a similar, you know, kind of thing going on where he wasn't always around, but it was because he was working to provide mm -hmm. for us. Just being able to hear that and really connect with it. I wanted to say that just so that you could get that from that side. And, you know, when your kids are listening to this song, they feel, they can easily feel and easily get that mindset of where I'm coming from. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I appreciate you bringing that up to be honest. Oh, you're very welcome. And I will not lie. There's probably going to be a good amount of fathers and sons that are going to listen to this and have a deeper appreciation for either if their father, a deeper appreciation for their kids, or if you're a son like myself, a deeper appreciation for what your father has done for you. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, you, you made a, uh, a comment about the, like, the harsh vocals. And I, I think that's why we decided to not have Dakota on the song because it was more like me, you know, I was writing a letter to my son. So we kept it very just my vocal centric. Um, I think that helped keep it authentic as well. You know, it wasn't like we were shoehorning Dakota in there just because he can sing good. We, 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 we kept it more just a me song. Oh, absolutely, because even taking a look at my little, like, notes on this, I wrote, like, the melodic pattern in your vocals is greatness in a bottle here because it allows us to really feel the heavy emotions our fathers have when it comes to their sons, especially from my perspective, and how they want to show their love and their, like, and their worth by being the best they can be, even when it isn't the easiest to do so. And, of course, yeah. I always put the like, two last letters I have, or two last words I have in this little scenario, but it's well done. Like, that's, that's the best way to describe it. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate the compliment. Oh, oh, you're very welcome. So, of course, you know, when the album comes out, of course, you know, as Tyler put it, one song to definitely look out for is going to be Thick as Blood. And for me, you know, Dear Sons, definitely take a listen to that one. On top of that, take a listen to the singles that are out and the whole entire album because, trust me, you're going to want to. Thanks, man. I'm glad you got to listen through all of it. Oh, I, I always want to go as deep as possible with some of these songs just because then – you know, I get to potentially see where you're coming from. And then like when we're talking about Dear Sons, it's just like seeing it from your perspective and seeing it from my perspective and seeing just how insanely correlated they are from two different sides of the story. Like how I can't, I can't, I can't describe how it was just like insanely awesome that was. Yeah, I enjoy it. That was uh, very cool, man. I, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I don't know how to say it any other way, but thank you. Like, cause that song does mean a lot to me. Um, and I'm ready for people to hear it. You know, it, it wasn't a song we made into a single um, or anything like that, but it's, I feel like it is a standout track on the record. But I, I also feel like a lot of the songs are standout, um, but I'm biased, as I said. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Because even like I would put Better Off in the, and there is another one of those standout tracks as well that just sticks to the top of my head. But I, again, Dear Sons is the one that just connected with me on the most. And I like the fact that if you're not, you're not going to make that a single just because it's a surprise that kind of kind of comes out that we get to listen to. And it's going to be yep. potentially very similar to a lot of people of like what I experienced when uh, Polaris released the death of me and above my head was that deeper track. And I listened to it first. I'm like, Oh, it's okay. I listened to the second time. I'm like, wait, what? 
Yeah, I love this song. <laughs> yeah, it's like you need Great some song. of the songs to really make the album just like, you know, of course the release of it, you got the singles that really, you know, got a lot of the, uh, mo- like, you know, the, the momentum for it. But then a song like Dear Sons is one of those songs where it's, you know, the momentum carries into it and then continues to carry on. Yep. Awesome. So, I mean, that that, that was just like, I, I'm, I'm just being asked. That was, that was pretty freaking cool. <laughs> I agree, man. That was super awesome. It was. So as we bring this podcast to its conclusion, Tyler, one thing I was like to do is give my guests, which is you at this point, a chance to say whatever you want to say, plug wherever you want to plug, promote it or promote at the end of the podcast. So Tyler, floor is yours. Um, yeah. So, uh, obviously I'm in hollow front. So, uh, at hollow front on Instagram, um, at hollow front band on Twitter, um, Facebook, we, we have one, but it's, Facebook's a dying art or dying, uh, app, I think, but, uh, at least for musicians. Um, but you can check us out there. We, like I said, we, and we've said this many times, May 27th, our new album, the price of dreaming comes out. We just had a new single called heritage. Uh, dropped uh, today and last night the video came out um, so you can go listen to that and you can listen to um, Treading Water and Comatose and The Price of Dreaming um, and yeah we, we also had a uh, I'm not sure if it'll still be available when this comes out but we had just had a limited edition uh, like a crystal, t- crystal dyed t-shirt just came out um, there's only like a hundred of them, so they might be sold out by the time this is out. <laughs> but if if not, uh, go grab yourself one. We have vinyls and a bunch of other pre-order stuff that you can grab uh, from the 2400.net um, slash Holofront, I believe. Um, yeah, and you can go pick up some vinyls, some hat, there's a hat, I think, and flags and all sorts of stuff. Well, now it's time for me in this podcast with three very specific things. So Tyler just gave you a bunch of stuff when it comes to Hollow Front, where to find them, watch some of the videos, pick up some merch. And if those shirts are still available, definitely go pick yourselves up. But if not, though, you got all the pre-order stuff. But instead of having to look all that stuff up yourself, because, I mean, you, you just want to make it as easy as possible, right? You just want to have that one-click, one-stop shop. Look at the link in the description of the podcast because it's going to have all their socials where you can watch these, where you can stream music, download music, buy their music, where you can pre-order this stuff, where you can just, you know, buy so much, everything. And also check them out on tour towards the, like, you know, second half of summer when they're on the road with August Burns, right? And we came as Romans. That's also going to be down there as well. So don't forget to pick up your tickets. And of course, if you're around Milwaukee, you want to come to the August 20th date when we can throw down at the Raven, have a good time. Because I'll be there. Oh, yeah. We'll make that happen. Now it's time for the second thing. So, Tyler, whenever I've guessed in the podcast, I tend to make a certain promise. And, well, it was pretty much a lock, especially just talking about touring. But then, you know, once we talk about Dear Sons, this was like an immortal lock at this point. So, I've seen you twice before. So, I can't say when I see you for the first time. I have to say when I see you the next time, which is going to be August 20th, if it's a, if we get to make a chance, my promise you is this. So, when I can see you at that point, bud, first round's on me. I do not drink anymore after the Milwaukee Halloween show, but I would love to meet and hang out. And uh, I'm sure one of my other band members would love to take you off up on that, on that drinking offer. Um, but I'll take a water. Well, I'll put it this way. I make good of my promises. So one of the bandmates can take that drink, but you, you get a water just the way you like it. Oh yeah. Perfect. So as we bring this podcast to its conclusion, I cannot in all good conscience say goodbye because of three things. One, when it comes to the price of dreaming, it comes out on May 27th. You don't want to forget about that. Two, it, I, honestly, Tyler, I do not want to be the only time we ever talk or have you on the podcast. I'd love to have you on again. Plus, August 20th, making a point. I'm finding you somewhere. Going to meet, hang out a little bit, get that water, and then I'll probably have a beer, and I'll get one of the other bandmates a beer or something. We'll call it a day yeah. at that. So got to make sure that happens. So the third thing is, any with a goodbye, that's way too final. Nah, we're not doing that. We're going to end it like this. I'll see you later. See you later. Well, folks, I'm here with Tyler from the band Hollow Front. Once again, they've got a brand album called The Price of Dreaming coming out on May 27th. So they got a new tour out coming, you know, second half of the summer. So late July, August with August Burns Red and We Came as Roman. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go get tickets to that tour. If you can go to the Milwaukee show on Saturday, August 20th, I'll be there. I'll be in the pit. Find the guy in the brewer's hat in the pit. That's going to be me. So we're going to go nuts. Let's have a good time there. On top of that, go pre-order them, go pre-save them, everything about that. Go follow them on all their social media platforms. So instead of having to, you know, like go and do that yourself and like have to find where to find all this stuff, look at groups of the podcast. I do the work for you under Find Hollow Front Online. You'll find everything in there from their social media 
media, the YouTube website, merch, where you can buy all this stuff and pre-order it, where you can stream music, download music, you know, pre-order it, all that good kind of stuff. So it is all there for you. Also, please remember to follow along with the Core Progression Podcast socially. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. So, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, we are probably most prominent on Instagram, but TikTok, you know, we're posting a lot of the fun little snippet videos from the podcast on top of that. Instagram is just like, you know, kind of where most stuff lives. Twitter, we're getting a little bit more on. Facebook's kind of, you know, more of the uh, business side of things. So you're seeing a lot of the streamlined stuff. Also, when it comes to the podcast, thank you for subscribing. If you're not subscribed, though, here's where you can subscribe. You want to watch the videos of the artists? We're right on YouTube. That's probably the most popular platform. Or you can stream it on Spotify, Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Amazon. All links are for the podcast as well. So thank you for subscribing. This is your first time here. Thank you for watching and listening to the podcast. On top of that, thank you for sponsors, Phoenix Fitness and Custom Views. Links and promo codes in the description of the podcast as well. Man, I can't wait for August 20th. Now, I know I got a lot of shows coming up in between there. You know, that's four months away, but man. Can't wait to, you know, see Hollow Front once again, see, you know, get to meet Tyler in person and, you know, just have a good time. So if you're going to be around the Milwaukee area, please come to that show. Let's sell enough tickets where they have to move it up to the ballroom stage. Let's go. Let's do it. So on that note, that's going to be for me, guys. Thank you for watching to the Core Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single one of them. The big, healthy, and hearty. See y'all. Yeah.